All right, we are getting ourselves organized here. I'm gonna share the screen. Okay. We did it. We did it. So uh, welcome. Hi, you guys know me, I'm Carrie. Um, and this project really has kind of come along at just the right moment, because uh, today we're gonna be discussing a proposal that we've been working on and I've been working on with my co-librarian. This is Ali Usine. Hello. Please allow me to introduce her. Yes, I'm Ali Usine. Um, before becoming a librarian with Carrie, I was a French teacher here at our high school. And um, I was just really always passionate about how to not only teach students the language, but make them global citizens and help create that like international education within my classroom. So we've been talking about this, what we will present today as a way to bring that international education work into the library setting. Isn't she mm -hmm. awesome? I'm so lucky. Um, okay, so Allie and I have a theme this year, much to our principal's chagrin, of outreach is sexy. And we really want to reach out and engage other departments um, on campus that might not naturally use the library. And specifically, we've been developing a proposal for the World Language Department about how to incorporate more library resources into their programming. Because we believe that the library can add a lot to their international education efforts, even though we're not really traveling, we'll be traveling through books and other library resources. Yay. Part of what we did is we really dug into the research around um, language development and not only how reading can help become a better French speaker, better Spanish speaker, better Korean speaker, etc., but how it can not only do that, but also impact empathy um, and get students to understand their place in the world more than just like doing grammar exercises in mm -hmm. their classroom. And I've done like, you don't know this, but I've done other projects for SIT about empathy, like building empathy. I, I know. So this really fits nicely yeah. with other stuff I've done too. But to give some background, we have 12 world language teachers at our site um, in four languages, Korean, Chinese, French, and Spanish. And so we created this presentation to try to appeal to all the languages and cultures and not just one specific type of class. Mm -hmm. So we're going to dig into this. Um, we are going to try and go quickly because I know it's supposed to be 10 minutes, um, but it's actually going to be really helpful for us to talk through our side, see what we have, see if we like it. Um, we haven't really gone through the presentation yet. We've just kind of been building it and developing it. Um, and so we're just going to kind of see if we can, there's ways we can strengthen our appeal and then hopefully by the end we'll be good to go. Hooray. Okay, so cool first slide. Nice job. <laughs> I think we're good there. Yay. Okay, so the we've got three slides coming up with facts. And so um, I wanted to like get a, a lot of times, especially high school teachers, we can be the worst audience. <laughs> That's and true. so I wanted to try to suck them in in some some way, some form other than just let us do lit circles in your classroom. <laughs> so we did a lot of research around empathy levels um, and not just language learning. So for example, we have this fact from um, the University of Michigan where college students are found to have empathy levels 40% lower than those who came before them. These are post 2000 grads. And so we want to make sure that like, like we're going to highlight this to the department because it's going to build up to what we're yeah. going to ask of them kind of I think and exactly and then oh hey University of Chicago 2015 bilingual children are more likely to be empathetic even if they're not completely fluent see I love that and that's applies to a lot of our students here and I think that'll be an easy connection for them to make mm -hmm. and then I love this uh, you found this one I found this is the American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages is like the language teacher holy place and Allie um, taught me about it I didn't know fun resource to learn about the executive director or the former executive director Mar Marty Abbott he said our future depends on our ability to engage with the rest of the world and right now Americans have a very tough mm. time doing that so I envision us being super dramatic like Empathy is here. <laughs> Language would help with that. <laughs> Americans are having a hard time with it. Boom, Done. Boom. I'm in. I think that's going to be awesome. And then um, they are, they know about this teaching the, the American Council. Oh like, yeah. Does your department know about that? No, I'm yeah. at, like, oh, your so, department. Do you think, yes. or do we need to explain that resource? They know about the American Council on okay. Teaching to Foreign Languages, and a lot of our like standards and stuff are from this organization as um how to determine like fluency and what mm -hmm. to bring to each level. 
Okay, good. You're the expert there, so I'm going to follow your lead on that. Okay, the next slide is like more drama. More drama. Like these are, you know, obviously when we've got students and teachers um, with inappropriate, you know, cultural appropriation, like foreign language classes are Mm -hmm. like the hotspot for helping us teach about it is and avoiding it, cultural appropriation so that we aren't in ABC seven news. And it's also <laughs> the place often where it's like, they only wear berets in France or they speak like Spanish is only spoken by a blah, blah, blah portion of the population. And mm-hmm. so I think this is a really good spot to kind of like get in there with the international education angle. Yeah. And I like the, I like kind of like the pop culture in the news angle too. Like, cause this is what our kids see, right? They go mm-hmm. on social media. So I think that's an important thing to bring up. Okay, so then I, we're going to say to them, but why world language, yeah. right? Like what you do in the world language classroom is just as impactful as STEM and English. And I know sometimes world language isn't like always highlighted and that's by no fault of your own. Um, I think we have to say that, but like we get what you do and we want to be here to help you improve that international aspect to your education through the amazing resources we have in the library. Okay. Libraries are not just for English teachers. Yes. Like we have an opportunity here. Okay. I think that's going to be good. And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> I think this is my favorite slide. Go. I want to go. What's happening? There we go. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Follow us on a journey. Follow us on a journey because we're superhero Again, librarians. High school teachers. <laughs> we're to entertain them. Um, okay, so after they <laughs> laugh at us, then we're going to hit them with more research. But this time, um, it's the idea of... Uh, they're turning really turning the sad research into positives, right? Yeah. So Cambridge professor um, Maria Nikolajeva, oh, I got to work on that. Um, in Cambridge, found that reading fiction provides an excellent training ground for young people in developing and practicing empathy, which obviously we can provide that here in the library. And then Emory researchers also say that fiction tricks our brain into thinking we're part of the story. The empathy we feel for characters wires our brains to have the same sensitivity towards real people. And so we're kind of imagining that teachers are going to be like, nah, isn't this something they should learn at home? Mm-hmm. Like, is this really going to be something that we can focus on in the world language classroom? Like, it's interesting, but... And that's where I think we're going to have to sell them. Okay. We got this. So we're going to sell them. It fits with the world language goals. So, um, which you're super familiar with. Yeah. There was this really interesting article on um, language teaching during COVID-19. Obviously COVID-19 was hard for all the subject areas, but especially like a world language class, we're supposed to be chatting and engaging and all together. There was um, on that seven tips, I found this and this is just one resource. Self-selected pleasure reading is the source of most of our vocabulary, grammar, spelling, and the ability to write. So this idea of like empathy, that's not our job. Like what did it do? It fits in actually a hundred percent with world language goals because that pleasure reading not only will help with the empathy piece but also with the building of language piece in that grammar sense I love that this next slide I think you're gonna have to do because I don't really know about like the predictors of subjunctive proficiency so So explain like how is this gonna be helpful especially like if I'm a Korean teacher like this is the slide I'm a little worried about so talk me through it so Dr. Krashen, who is- Is that like, the one that you like crush on? I I mean, he he's like an older gentleman, but he <laughs> I, I, I professionally crush on him. Um, <laughs> he, he talked at a library conference last year or the year before. And I was like, Carrie, we must go. <laughs> um, but just, I Dr. Krashen, basically you say Krashen or Krashen's method and a world language teacher will be like, yeah. <laughs> and he did a study- where English speakers who spoke Spanish as a second language, they were tested on their ability to use the subjunctive, which is just, this is just an example tense. Subjunctive exists in French, it exists in other languages. It's just this one. In this case, it was Spanish. And researchers considered a number of predictors of like proficiency in this tense, which often can be tricky for students. And that was like amount of formal study, years of residency in a Spanish speaking country, the amount of reading done in Spanish. So they had looked at all of these like predictors of can you use subjunctive in a conversation? Can you use this language that you've been studying in real life? And what they found, I dramatically again on the next slide. Uh-huh, I get the it now. <laughs> only significant predictor was reading in Spanish. And so it wasn't that 
formal study in the classroom wasn't even living in Spain or another Spanish speaking country. They okay. said like even just just those pieces of grammar that teachers are trying to explain in class, like subjunctive or anything that's tricky for students. Actually, reading in Spanish was the only significant predictor. So again, trying to trying to hook them into what we're doing. Yeah, because obviously here in the library we can help with reading. So we have some ideas. We're back again. So we're gonna um, propose an idea about experimenting with lit circles. Lit circles is a thing that a lot of our students are already familiar with because our English teachers do it a ton. But there's no reason why. Sorry, there's no reason why um, we can't do it in other courses as well. So to kind of think more about that um we have a lot of grab and go resources available for you guys or for the world language department and so we put together right here just kind of six different ways that you can grab some of these resources right away start looking at them today start thinking about how you might be able to incorporate it and so things are linked here to this like virtual classroom library that senora low put together your stuff from mm -hmm. kifa 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 demon Keep keep your math. Demand. <laughs> oh, my French is poor. Um, we do a lot of reflective work with classes, so we can talk. And they're gonna know Ed Puzzle and Flipgrid, but we can talk about how we could help create some of these resources for them. And so we're gonna also talk about how we can do some of this stuff. Um, I think it's also really important to show them, like we included even the first one is um like a, a packet that an English teacher put together that mm -hmm. she uses for her lit circles where students have different roles as they're reading. And then mm -hmm. on the side, there's on um, there's world language teacher blog where they're doing the same kind of things. And so do you think that. when we present this, we should like click through these things or we could provide copies either way. I just worry about time. Like, yeah. we, like, cause I'll, how, how like, we don't it's have grab a and go. They can like, they yeah. can share it with them. I think um, that might be better, but just to like prove the point that like we yeah. have resources, but it's not just like that really dorky, like cultural reading in your textbook. <laughs> like you can do like build empathy. French and, people have baguettes yeah. and only eat at cafes. And build that cultural knowledge with like a novel that takes place in a French speaking country. It and so have to be boring. that's this slide too. Like uh -huh. we want to emphasize that like they're the experts in their language but we're super good experts in we providing curate, materials yeah. so we do have some books available in foreign languages like we've got harry potter in chinese and how the garcia girls lost their accent lost their accent yeah. in China. Yeah. Like, sorry, sorry I I forget. Yeah. <laughs> but then also books like the hidden diary of marie antoinette that's in english but it provides cultural insight so it's a fun read it's a fiction read mm -hmm. lets you escape lets you build some empathy Grass um, is a graphic novel mm -hmm. and you're learning so much about like Korean history through that, even though it's like a graphic novel, it's fun. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot to learn with the visual literacy. And I think we can also stress that we are able to help them teach through visual literacy as well. Mm -hmm. That's probably a good thing to add in here. Okay. I know. Okay. So then here we're back again. So the other thing we can present to them is about some research. And so more resources, we have tools. So we have Sora, which is not you, my beautiful advisor. This is actually a, a link to a um, ebook, an e audio book, a platform that we actually subscribe to here as a library. And there are books in foreign languages there. Also Noodle Tools for citation support. So we can actually teach them, like we do this really cool Dia de los Muertos Alters project every year. And so with the Spanish War Honors Kids, and we can help them create those um, works cited pages or reference pages. Digital literacy. We have, we subscribe to, I think it's like 14 or 15 different databases. Um, and some of them in particular really apply to world language, like culture grams, where you can look up specific country information, learn the languages that they're, they're seeing. So you can see that French is also spoken in Morocco yeah. and, you know, other places. Yeah, um, global issues. Exactly. And global issues lets you look at issues that go beyond the borders of the United States with that international education angle. Um, you know, because part of our goals at Doherty, oh, we should say this, part of our goals at Doherty, right, is to create those um, global citizens. Right, built in. Yeah, so yeah. we should add that in. Um, also, if we do book clubs or research, there's some different combos here. I don't know how much we want to focus on this when we talk, because it's cool, but it's kind of dense. Yeah, it's, I think I, we went a little overboard maybe, but I wonder if, we if just, they wanted to yeah. do some research, for example, on like, something culturally that they found interesting within their books we could help with it but I hear you 
It is dense, especially if we're trying to, if our goal is like to get the buy-in originally. Mm -hmm. so. But I like the foci. That's a little Thank plural. You. I, yeah, I like the foci, but I'm just, I don't know. Because it is true, like, if you scan and skim, like, we can brainstorm those topics, get their interest, and then we've kind of picked out what they've got, and we can make live guides or live guides. We can't decide how to say it. Um, which means we would basically make a resource list of options based on their kind of interest that they've developed from the scanning and skimming. Mm -hmm. Focus, comprehending, and summarizing. Summarize the text, main points, POV appears, especially if you're doing that in a yeah. foreign language. Yeah, if you remember, like, mm -hmm. even just, like, small chunks of text sometimes can be really tricky, and so you're practicing, like, the language skills also. But I hear you. Yeah, but maybe we can make this into two slides. Yeah, I think that would be better. Because I like it, but we also, you know, we always tell people, like, don't put too much on a There's slide, too I much. think. Because yeah. then listen to each other's people. Like, I just, I like this, but, okay, that's a something for us to think about mm -hmm. and then we wrap it up we're here to help you that's our email address we want your kids to read we want them to read in foreign languages we want them to read about cultures in different languages and we kind of end with what everyone has heard before is that that is how to create a single story show a people as one thing as one only one thing over and over again and that is what they become dun, dun, i love dun. that ending and then we do have our references here along with James Corden. Um, and so those are all here and we can update that if we need to, if we kind of decide to change we things change around. Things but I I think that's, I mean, I think we're in a good place, Allie. I think we're almost there in terms of being yeah, able to present it. But I think, I think it's going to be good. I think we're going to be able to, um, I, th I just think it's going to work for us. I think, I think that when we go in and we do our spiel and put on our show, we're going to get some buy-in. Yay. Okay. Well, thanks for being willing to record this of with course. me. Thanks I just think you're a rock star and I love working with you. And so thanks for being a part of my SIT video. I love it. Thanks for working with me. <laughs> right back at you. And actually, fun sidebar note for everybody. The only reason why I know about SIT and I'm in this program is because she told me about it. So thanks, Allie. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's figure out how to end this. End.